Back in the 60s, this 53-year-old rabbi founded the JDL in the United States, a group that used tactics of violence and confrontation in defense of Jews. Thirteen years ago, he moved to Israel, where he now crusades to throw all Arabs out of that country. That stand propelled him into the Knesset, where his party currently holds one seat. But if an election were held today, some polls show, his party could win enough seats to make them a decisive force in the next Israeli government. His message is loud and clear. The Arab is a cancer in our midst. And you don't coexist with a cancer. A cancer you either cut out and throw out or you die. It's better to have a Jewish state that is hated by the whole world than an Auschwitz that's loved by it. When he first entered politics in Israel, most people wrote him off as a kook, an obscene embarrassment. His violent tactics got him arrested more than 20 times. Now all that has changed. He has arrived. Kahana is especially strong among the Israeli young. Some 40% of high school students in a recent poll there said they supported his ideas. 11% said they would vote for him. And he has a great following among Jews like these in a Tel Aviv market. These are Sephardic Jews, and they come from Arab countries, and they know what Arabs are. And they never again want to live under, under Arabs, and that's why they're my people. Because I say what they think in their hearts. If one Arab tell you I like Jew, this is not true, and I tell you why. They grow up, and what they think, you know, to kill Jew, to put a grenade, to, to shoot with RPG. Well, what they start, what they study, this is from Lebanon. They always want to kill us. If someone wants to kill you, kill him before he kill you. They want the Arabs out of here. And until someone says it, they won't back him. I come and I say, Harvim, Achutza, Arabs out, that's what they want. Arabs are the fellow human beings of Jews. Are they somehow not as good? Not true at all. It's precisely because I respect the Arab and know that the Arab sincerely believes that we Jews are thieves, all of us. He sincerely believes that we are thieves. We came to the, the country in 1880. There was a majority of Arabs. And you sincerely believe that they are thieves. They drain our money. They exactly steal right. our land. Exactly they kill our right. children. And therefore it's they an pollute. immutable problem. It's an immutable problem. And therefore, I want them out in any one of their 22 countries. May God bless them all. And just leaving my one country. But you don't expect them to go. Of course not. I expect to throw them out. Azar Weitzman is the Israeli cabinet minister whose responsibility is to improve relations with the Arabs. And he is outraged by Kahana. I believe that Kahana is a typical Galut Jew. Galut. Galut, a diaspora Jew an exiled Jew who does not understand Zionism, who does not understand what it is to be a free citizen and a free Israel, who does not understand what is tolerance to, to other human beings, who does not understand the strength of Israel, and the strength of Israel is not by beating Arabs in the street. Israelis have always delighted in a good political ruckus. But nothing gets tempers flaring these days like the name Kahana. So Kahana is going to be here, he's not going to be like Khomeini. Kahana is a fascist, he always was a fascist. He's a very good man. Kahana for Prime Minister? Kahana is very good. Kahana is a disaster for this country. Much of Kahana's political message is based on simple arithmetic. If you include the occupied territories, two out of every five individuals now living in all the land ruled by Israel are Arabs. And since their birth rate is greater than that of the Jewish population, eventually, says Kahana, Arabs will outnumber Jews in Israel. And if, they, if the Arabs were to become a majority, then what would happen? If you want to get some idea, look what they do to themselves in Beirut, and then you'll get some idea of what they'll do to us. Slaughter. Yes, slaughter. The Israeli parliament has passed a bill obviously aimed at Kahana that would ban all racist parties. But Kahana asks his Jewish opponents how they would react to the possibility of an Arab majority in Israel. In theory, do they have a right to be the majority? Yes or no? They can't answer that. They cannot answer that if question. If Israel is a democratic state, then obviously they do. Right, but if it's a Zionist state, obviously... They don't. But well, you're the one who finds it impossible to accept both Zionism and democracy anyone, in the same state. Anyone does, because Zionism, the very definition of it is the creation of a Jewish state. In fact, 
Israel is defined in its declaration, independence, as the Jewish state. You think that that, that makes Arabs feel happy? You think that Arabs rush in, into the streets on Independence Day in Israel to celebrate their defeat? I, I think that only liberals have such contempt for Arabs that they believe that you can buy an Arab's national pride by raising his living standards. Not by bread alone does an Arab live. Because I respect the Arab, I want to throw him out. Meron Benvenisti is former deputy mayor of Jerusalem, a highly regarded expert on Arab affairs. He says Kahana has touched on what has always been a raw nerve in Israel, how a Jewish Zionist state can make all the people who live there feel like full-fledged citizens. I agree that the problem is that Israel can be either democratic or Jewish. It cannot be both. And this is what Kahana is saying also. But what Kahana says is that I'll be undemocratic and racist. I'll just throw the Arabs out. For me, this is unthinkable because my Zionist ethos, my Jewish conscience, dictates that Israel can, must find a way to reconcile the two values. Yeah, but you've been trying to reconcile the two values here since 1948. Right. And you haven't reconciled them. Things are not getting better, they're getting worse. Well, I, I don't want to give it up. Well, I understand you don't yeah, want to give yeah. it up. And then the long run, it will. It will. So, look, the whole notion of taking Arabs, putting them in trucks and moving them is preposterous. It is based on the fact that we can control the Arabs. There are two million Arabs here, and they say now that this time they will not leave like in 48. They will fight, and you have to kill them. And I don't believe that any Israeli is ready to do that. This is all nonsense. It is all just hot air. But a new outbreak of hostility between Arabs and Jews has given Kahana new strength. Scenes like this over the past few months. Individual Jews killed, others wounded, mainly by Arabs from the West Bank, acting with little apparent coordination. Pushed by public outrage, the government has taken tough new measures, curfews, arrests, even deportation of suspected terrorists and the bulldozing of their homes. We are slowly sliding into a, an Ulster situation, into a Belfast situation, slowly. The cycle of violence only increases the bitterness of the new generation of young Arabs and Jews. The young Arabs, who have never known a time when the West Bank was not occupied by Israel, and who daily see armed Jewish settlers walking through the West Bank towns. And the young Jews, who after decades of war and in the middle of a fierce economic crisis, still have no real hope of peace. I think people are frustrated. They're frustrated after so many years of trying a peace. There's no peace. There's continued war. There's continued terrorism, especially after, after the murders that were recently up north. People are aggravated. People don't know how to fight this. People know that the only person that's a hardliner on all of the issues and that's saying what they really believe is Kahana. He's the person that's coming out to the people. Kahana turned up in the Arab West Bank city of Hebron, for example, a couple of days after a Jewish settler was knifed in the marketplace there. Every tragedy gives us greater strength. And it's not going to be long before we have the power to clean this place out. And that's where I want them out, out, out. Many Israeli soldiers make little secret of their support for Kahana, as do some of the settlers. If I were the settlers, I would, I would rampage through this town and put the fear of God into these Arabs. Don't want to see him as prime minister. I don't believe in what he says or preaches, but, but it doesn't mean that the youth of this country are not disenchanted with the government. Because they see that uh, every two or three years, three days, a, a man uh, killed and the killer is uh, Arab. Shocked by the growth of pro-Kahana sentiment and racism among the young, the Israeli government is starting courses in the schools and the army aimed at combating what has come to be known as Kahanism. But the problem is that young Israelis are still being armed and trained to defend against the Arabs. I do not blame the younger generation in Israel for not knowing where to stand and some of them to join Kahana. I blame the leadership for not presenting the clear choice. And that is again the uh, failure of leadership more than it is a the failure of... The clear choice to do what? The clear choice that we have... Jewish state or democratic state? In other words, make the, the Arabs equal partners. Yes, or if you don't want that and you want to keep the purity of the Jewish state, give up the territories. But you cannot eat the cake and have it. 
But Kahana not only wants to throw out the Arabs from the occupied territories, the West Bank, he also wants to deport those Arabs who are citizens of Israel proper. Last year, only the military prevented Kahana from delivering his message personally to the Arabs to the city of Umm al-Fahm, the second largest Arab city in Israel proper. The rabbi showed a man what he thought of a piece of paper on which the man had labeled Kahana a racist. <laughs> Kahana called the man a dirty Arab. Kahana often refers to Arabs as dogs. I want to make it clear to those dogs that are standing there, there is no such thing as an Arab village in the state of Israel. Many Israelis say that what set the stage for Kahana and the turmoil that swirls around him were the Begin years in Israel. Like Kahana, Begin and some of his associates made frequent disparaging attacks against the Arabs. People like Kahana, do they flourish when uh, Menachem Begin calls uh, Arabs two-legged animals, when uh, the chief of staff, Aitan, calls them cockroaches in a bottle? Is there not at the leadership of the leadership, indeed, of the government which you helped bring to power, a kind of bigotry expressed openly, which Kahana is now capitalizing on. I definitely will not disagree with you that leadership has got a lot to do with the mood of the people. And it's up to the leadership to change the mood of the people and lead them. That's why I left, it. That's why I left that government you're talking about. Like Azer Weitzman, by far the majority of Israelis are against Kahana. Recently, some young Jewish members of the Labour Party tried to stop him from speaking at a rally in Tel Aviv. Kahana, true to form, went out of his way to provoke a confrontation. When I take power and I ban these parties, I'll be able to show why I'm doing it. They're playing into my hands. These are people who won't give me to speak. They have written their own death warrant as political parties. They will not be allowed to speak. Mayor Mahmoud Hashem is an Israeli Arab, the mayor of Um El Fahm, and he fears the fight against Kahana and racism could degenerate into civil war. We are now under a great danger, and there is, we are expecting a great fight against racists. I know Jews are afraid exactly like me, maybe more. You really think he's a fascist? I think he's a Nazi. Hitler? Yes, Hitler. You proposed a law for the Knesset to pass against Arabs. That's really astonishingly identical to the Nuremberg laws of the Nazis under Adolf Hitler. Mr. Wallace, one of the problems of Jews is that they wouldn't know a Jewish concept if they tripped over one. I merely quoted from the Talmud. Most Jews think that Judaism is Thomas Jefferson. It's not. All right, let, let's go to some specifics about the law that you propose. Kahana proposal, status of non-Jews. They have no national rights, no part in the political practices of the state of Israel. The Nazi law. Jews cannot be citizens of the Reich. They have no right to vote or hold a public position. Kahana would also forbid Kahana's Jews from marrying non-Jews. He would even set up segregated beaches for Jews and non-Jews. All this very similar to Nazi laws. Same thing. The Nazi law, the Kahana law. We aren't racists. Any non-Jew who wishes to become Jewish can become Jewish, can convert and be as much a Jew as I am. The Germans set down an ironclad barrier. Aryans were Aryans and non-Aryans could never be. Join my religion, you are saying, or else accede to second-class citizenship. That's Either become a Jew no, live in your own country as a first-class citizen. You know, of course, that there are distinguished rabbis who don't agree that what you are preaching here is Judaism. What they are, what they say that you are preaching is racism and bigotry. I challenge any of them to a debate. If, why are they afraid to debate me? Let's... They don't want to dignify you. No, that's a cop-out. They are ashamed of you. I simply had the courage, if you will, to simply take Judaism from the Talmud and say this is what should be in, in Israel. People speculate that Mayor Kahana could wind up dead. You know that. I know that. And you have suggested that it would not be at the hands of an Arab, but at the hands of a Jew. 
Yes. Why would they want to murder Mayor Kahana now? Because they are frustrated. They know of no other way to stop him. Their nightmare is that will Kahana become the prime minister. You don't really believe you're going to be prime minister, Rabbi Kahana? I hope that I'll be the prime minister to save the Jews from the Arabs and from themselves. Even though most American Jewish leaders denounce Kahana, he claims that his major financial backing comes from American Jews. Losing his American passport this past week will not make it easier for him to come here to raise money. 